more not very good news. <laughs> so the question generation process has worked really well. So I have a number of what appear to be fascinating questions here. Um, now would be the time, also, if you have questions specifically for Dr. Clem, to pass those cards to the sides. If I could ask our collectors to collect those and bring them up. And while they're doing that, I'll start with the questions that we already have submitted. Now, I think it's true that if we were to ask every one of these questions that I have already, and they were to be thoroughly answered, we would be here till probably midnight. So, um, you know, we'll do the best that, that we can do with this. So here's the first question, and Dave Lockbaum, this is addressed specifically to you, but again, if when he's answered, others of you have something you'd like to contribute, please say so. Uh, and we're hoping your microphones there work. Oh, good. If the workers had not shut down the safety systems, this is at Fukushima, would the reactor have failed anyway, as the metal cladding would have split due to large temperature drop? That's a, good, that's a good question. I should have covered it during the presentation, so whoever asked it, I, I'm thankful for, for giving me a second shot at the apple. They were pretty much doomed either way. Had the, thank you, had the, had they not turned off the isolation condenser, at some point the, they would have heated the water up in those two large tanks where the tanks went through, up to the point of boiling. They would have boiled away that water and they would have lost the isolation condenser function. So they would have had a meltdown anyway. Turning it off, if the, and that's assuming that the they didn't crack the reactor vessel due to the contraction of the, of the excessive cool down rate. So the, I, I don't mean to blame the operators for turning off the system that changed the timeline of the meltdown. It didn't change the, the end point. 